You can follow him on Twitter at Ariel Hawani and proud Syracuse grad. Ariel, uh, you were there. You saw the press conference. Was was that all, you know, a fire and brimstone, but then behind closed doors it was, hey, guys, that was awesome? No, no, it wasn't. And, and by the way, thank you again for having me on the show, guys. Uh, no, that, that wasn't staged, although, you know, make no mistake about it, if anyone from the UFC is telling you the truth, uh, they profited greatly from that. Sometimes you step into these situations and uh, they kind of are born organically in front of you and they lead to, to even greater interest. The press conference itself became a story, and that wasn't the plan. I thought at first starting the press conference without Connor was a misstep, but then his absence became a story, and then him showing up late was a story, and Nate walking out was a story, and then the bottle throwing was a story. So to me, that was a home run, and at the end of the day, you don't want anyone to get hurt. Now that we know no one got seriously hurt, uh, it's hard to argue with the fact that that was one of, if not the most memorable press conferences in UFC history, and I suspect it will lead to more pay-per-view buys on Saturday. Who does Conor McGregor hate more, Nate Diaz or Dana White? Oh, I don't know. You know, to be honest with you, I think he has deep down inside a lot of respect for both of them. You know, the I, I actually don't think he has all that much hatred towards Dana White. I think Dana, you know, sometimes gets a little upset when he shows up late uh, to these media obligations or doesn't show up at all, which was the case back in April. And I thought, you know, him putting his foot down and saying, look, you, you made a joke about the, the Stone Cold Steve Austin and Vince McMahon thing, but I actually think that's a very real um, emotion that they're tapping into here, which is actually somewhat, I think, by accident, because every single employee out there in the world can relate to the idea of being in some kind of feud with his or her boss, right? And why was that Vince McMahon and Stone Cold Steve Austin feud so successful? Because at the end of the day, Stone Cold got to put his hand on his boss and give him the one-finger salute. And everyone loved that and sort of dreamed in the back of their mind of doing that to their boss. So this little, you know, passive-aggressive relationship, this tension brewing between the two of them, while I think unintentional, is actually quite brilliant. When it comes to the punishment, for these guys from the press conference. Dana White put out a statement saying they're both getting punished. What everybody's got to understand, we're overseen by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. I guarantee you both of these guys are going to get massive fines, and there's probably going to be a hearing after the fight. There could be suspensions, community service. It's going to be ugly. How ugly can it get? I don't think it will be that ugly, to be honest. I mean, let's not forget that Daniel Cormier and John Jones actually got into a physical brawl in the lobby of the MGM Grand a couple of years ago. I mean, there were actually people checking in right behind them, and they're throwing shoes at each other and throwing, you know, bombs at each other. Not literal bombs, of course, but punches. Um, this time, yes, cans are dangerous, and you, you never want to see that happen, but it wasn't a controlled environment, and at the end of the day, no one got hurt. So I suspect the same thing is going to happen, uh, you know, relatively close to what happened to John Jones and Daniel Cormier. They will get a fine, probably. They may have to do some community service, but... You know, the fight's not going to be called off. They're not going to get suspended, anything, you know, anything like that. It is interesting, though, that the UFC couldn't have promoted that incident quick enough on social media. I mean, it was everywhere. They were on top of that thing incredibly fast. And then by Wednesday night, they had deleted any mention of it. Video, tweet, anything like that was just gone. And I wonder if that was because the Nevada Athletic Commission wasn't too happy that it happened, you know, in the, uh, in the MGM on, on Wednesday afternoon. It's the Rich Eisen Show, audience and direct TV. Jason Smith in for Rich. We're talking with Ariel Helwani, MMA journalist. You can follow him on Twitter, at Ariel Helwani. All right, fill in the blank for me here. Conor McGregor will win if what? Oh, wow. I mean, that is a, that is a great question. Um, you know, we can't forget that he actually fought a great fight the first time around. I thought he fought, uh, you know, a really solid first round. I thought he won the first round. He landed some big shots. Um, he's right. A lot of the shots that he landed in that first round would have put away a lot of his opponents at 145 pounds, 155 pounds. Unfortunately, in the second round, uh, you know, he absorbed some big shots and ran out of some steam. So, you know, we just had the weigh-in, and I thought he looked a lot better this time around than he did back in March. Back in March, when he weighed in close to 170 pounds, he looked like a bloated 170-pounder. Um, he said afterwards that once he found out that he was fighting 15 pounds higher, he started eating a lot of steak and rice and really just kind of took his foot off the gas as far as his weight is concerned. This time he looked very, very much in good shape. Uh, he looked cut. He just looked like a natural 168-pound person. And Nate looked like a better, you know, looked like he was in better shape as well. So, you know, I, I think 
a similar, you know, he puts out a similar kind of fight, uh, he could have great success. And, you know, the, it seems like the odds makers agree because right now he is a slight favorite. Hey, Ariel, we had uh, Randy Couture in studio earlier this week, obviously uh, six-time UFC champion in the Hall of Fame. We are talking earlier about Conor McGregor and his relationship with Dana White. You yourself are someone that has had a little bit of a tumultuous relationship with Dana White in the UFC. Randy Couture said he has zero relationship with the UFC, and he's pretty much banned from entering any events. Are we going to see a shift in this now that the UFC has been sold and from that kind of attitude where they had before? I mean, how do you have one of your most legendary fighters of all time not a part of anything? You know, I think I mentioned this when I was in studio back in June, um, and I've said this on, on numerous shows before. I really feel like we're, we're kind of in the 1920s football era right now, and we're going to look back on this time in 30, 40 years and say, I can't believe things were being done this way. And witness the fact that last night here in Las Vegas, um, a group called the Professional Fighters Association, led by Jeff Boris, longtime baseball agent for the likes of Ricky Henderson, Barry Bonds, Bobby Bonilla, and many others, uh, he is try trying to start a, a fighters union. And this is something that has never been done before. He's trying to unionize the UFC fighters. He's been walking around the MGM and the Red Rock Casino, which is where the, uh, the fighters are staying this week, uh, talking all all the fighters, all the managers that he can, you know, get their ear. And, you know, there could be a lot of changes. You know, the UFC has kind of pushed the fighters in this direction with instituting the, the Reebok uniform deal, with instituting the USADA drug testing, with the TV deal, which the fighters don't get any cut of. So, yeah, a lot of things can change in the next few years. It's just a matter of do the fighters want to kind of step outside of their comfort zone and, 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 and make a few sacrifices for the greater good of, of, of the sport for themselves, for the future of the sport. They haven't shown a great interest in doing that. I think it's, you know, understandably so because they're a little bit afraid of repercussions. But if they can just sort of band together and recognize that they're leaving a lot of money and a lot of rights at the bargaining table, I think they would be better off. And, and who knows what that will lead to if the likes of Randy Couture will have a better relationship if the new ownership will lead, you know, try to reach out to Randy, you know, who knows. But I think the first thing that they need to sort of get a, a handle on is collective bargaining and look at other sports and see how they sort of come together on a uni unified front and how the fighters have, uh, you know, have sort of been you know, mistreated in many ways because they don't have that unified front in the UFC. Hey, Ariel, real quick, Dana White said that John Jones may not have tested positive for the drug they originally thought. That's a good thing for Jones, right? Well, he didn't necessarily say that. He, he said that he may have unknowingly taken something. This is a very fluid situation. You have to remember that he's He's battling two fronts. Not only does he have to battle the United States Anti-Doping Agency, he also has to battle the Nevada Athletic Commission. So he's going to get it from two sides here. Uh, they, they seem to be confident that they have a good story to tell, but they have, they have yet to tell that story because they're involved in this process with you, Um But, yeah, that, 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 you know, if you're a John Jones fan, that was obviously a, you know, a, a potentially reassuring statement, but it's far from over as far as he's concerned. You can follow him on Twitter at Ariel Helwani, MMA fighting journalist, host of the MMA Hour. He will be at the fight tomorrow night wearing a Bayheim mask. Ariel, appreciate it. Thanks so much. Enjoy uh, 202. Go Orange. All right. <laughs> Go Orange. That's All what right. I'm talking about right there. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.